Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today in the 60 webinar provided by OBA. Uh, I will share my presentation and start the session. Just want to make sure that my voice is uh, clear. Please type one in the chat area to make sure that my voice is clear. Okay, great. We'll share my presentation. You see my screen, please. Okay, thank you. Hello again, everyone. Uh, this is me, Asom Hilmi. Uh, I'm a success partner at OBA, Online Petroleum Academy. Uh, and I will be your moderator in today's webinar. Uh, the second T webinar provided by OBA. This webinar is titled Sandstone versus Carbonate Acidizing. This is a very interesting topic to discuss today with engineer Mohammed uh, Gabri. Before starting the, starting the session today, I'd like to give you a short presentation uh, about OBA upcoming services plan. Uh, this is our dashboard that shows that we are presented globally everywhere. Uh, we have different teams based here in Egypt, Lebanon, and uh, Belgium. Uh, we already provided uh, 60 webinar, free webinars for uh, people to share knowledge and learn and for better education in the energy industry. We have in diversity for uh, the attendees. Uh, we have uh, like 60% uh, there's a 40 percent gender uh, diversity. Uh, you can follow us on all social media platforms like uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, for sure on YouTube. If you missed uh, any of the webinars, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel. This one is live streamed on YouTube and you also find all the previous webinars on the YouTube channel. And I will provide you with the links for these uh, these all social media platforms just in minutes. Uh, here is our second wave quarter courses for 2023. Uh, we already finished two of the courses uh, for this quarter, uh, which are rate transit analysis and pressure transit analysis. Uh, and we are about to start uh, two interesting courses. Uh, which we will go through uh, some of the information for one of them today, which is acid uh, stimulation theory and best practices. And the second one is well control. You can see on the screen the dates for these courses with the break uh, highlighted in uh, in light blue. Uh, for the acid stimulation, it will be from uh, 25th of February till uh, the 2nd of March. Uh, and for the well control preparation course, it will be from the 11th of March till the 16th of March. Uh, here is a QR code that you can scan to uh, register in, in one of these interesting courses and then also in the upcoming courses. Uh, you have a moment to scan uh, the QR code. Okay, uh, we also have uh plenty of recorded courses very interesting courses in different softwares in the oil and gas industry uh, like in the bipsim uh fracad of m uh Kappa sapphire uh mbal prosper and very interesting topics like uh, perforation design regulates well intervention drilling flow the school uh, you you can uh, scan the this qr code if you want to join in one of these courses or uh, more and you can get your big sale if you are interested to get uh, more than one course uh, here is our mentorship program uh, actually our mentorship program is a little bit different than the recorded or the live courses this mentorship program is designed for you 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 already design it 
for your preference, you, uh, you, you choose your instructor. Uh, if you have uh, a study that you want to work on it one by one uh, with your uh, lecturer and the instructor, uh, here are the advantages of the of the mentorship program, and you can find more about this on our website. We already conducted more than 34 mentorship programs with more than six, 600 learning hours uh, with more than 10 mentors. Uh, I, I don't want to be long on this, but actually the role of a mentor is to motivate, empower, nurture, teach, offer guidance, and uh, respond to the mentee's needs, which is your needs. Uh, I, I, I also would like to encourage you all to visit our interesting website to see our services and uh, re recorded courses, web-based web, uh, courses that are uh, very interesting. Here are uh, a screenshot from the website. You can go check and uh, give us your feedback for sure. We also provide uh, internship programs, uh, which is uh, hybrid, uh, hybrid, hybrid programs in which are you you get uh, technical knowledge uh, in courses and softwares in the office, and you also get uh, some failed trips. This this we conducted uh, more than two internship programs for different group of students from different universities in Lebanon. Uh, you can see this through these uh, beautiful pictures and uh, memories that we have with our uh, interns. Uh, just to be an OBA ambassador, you only need to join us in one of our courses or mentorship program, and you can enjoy our uh, benefits and the privileges that we give to people who are uh, in our ambassador group. Uh, rules for this webinar, please. Uh, I, I already kept the microphones muted so that you can all get the best benefit and uh, learning experience from this webinar, not to be interrupted by others. Uh, so also please keep your camera closed. If you have a question during the webinar, please put your question in the, in the chat box uh, and to keep it also to, till the end of the webinar and I will uh, read it loudly to the, our beautiful instructor, Engineer Muhammad, and he will be happy to answer your questions by the end of the webinar. Please, if you uh, joined uh, without changing your name to the, the name that you want to be in the certificate that we will send one week later after the webinar. So please go rename yourself with your desired name. As I mentioned, certificates will be sent within one week from today. Uh, thank you uh, for listening and sorry for being too long. Uh, now I would like to introduce to you our uh, in, our instructor for today's webinar, Engineer Mohammed uh, Gabri. Engineer Mohammed uh, Gabri is a senior petroleum engineer in the World Services uh, Department with uh, a decade of working experience with Khalda Petroleum Company. Khalda is uh, a joint venture with Abachi Corporation working in Egypt uh, for decades. Uh, his experience in acid stimulation and hydraulic fracturing operations in conventional and unconventional reservoirs. He held a bachelor's degree in petroleum engineering from Seoul University in 2010 and a master's degree in uh, petroleum engineering also from Seoul University in 2020. He worked as a subsurface petroleum engineer between uh, 2011 and 2021. Engineer Muhammad published uh, multiple uh, published multiple uh, papers with the SPE site of petroleum engineers uh, and OTC uh, ARMA and a uh, couple of journal papers. Uh, engineer Muhammad, uh, this is a great opportunity to welcome you with us today. Uh, I'm I'm also very interested in uh, listening and uh, knowing about this webinar. Thanks again for joining us, and the stage is yours to start the webinar. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Engineer Hassan, for uh, for the introduction. 
Welcome to everybody. Uh, I am Mohammed Gabri. We'll talk about today, and uh, today we'll talk about uh, acid stimulation uh, in uh, in a quick comparison between carbonates and sandstone acidizing. Some people, when when you uh, in 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 practical experience in oil industry, think acid stimulation is just uh, a small amount of acid. It's it's bumped uh, to start production or uh, remove neural wood damage. But I think it we need to get more insights and more deep understanding of what this acid uh, do in in our wells uh, to to prevent the the production loss from the acid stimulation. So it's it's. It's more complicated. It's maybe more complicated than other stimulation uh, method. Today, we'll talk our presentation. We'll talk about why we need acid stimulation and discuss briefly the sandstone fluids uh, 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 versus carbonate fluids and the, the challenges that, that face in acid stimulation in sandstone and the, the same challenges in, in carbonate and get some guidelines, quick guidelines to for acid stimulation as an introduction for the acid stimulation. So simply, what is the matrix stimulation job? Simply, uh, as a stimulation, we get the benefit of the chemical reaction between the, the sum of rock component with the acid to remove the knee rule board damage or bypass the knee rule board damage. It can be conducted in, in, uh, in uh, carbonate or sandstone based on and with different philosophy, we can bypass or remove the knee rule board damage. So, uh, uh, has a complicated mechanism during the, this reaction because actually nobody knows what is the real uh, component and what is accurate com uh, composition of the rock uh, in our reservoir. So it's the, the reaction uh, between the acid and the, the rock components is more complicated. So we, dis we get the benefit of this solubility and this reaction between the acid and the, and the some of rock components to remove the neural board damage or bypass the neural board damage. Where the acid uh, works, it works in the area around neural board. It's called the critical matrix area, where is the most of the pressure drop with it, uh, due to the damage uh, of the due to the damage around the wheel bore and it's it, uh, most of production loss and uh, that's where the skin present so it it uh, it our skin is around the neural bore area so we we treat in the acid stimulation with this uh, with this area which you call the critical matrix for our uh, our Darcy equation, uh, our skin uh, S uh, in in around is mainly concentrated around the neural wall area, and where, that's where the most of production loss due to the pressure the pressure drop in the uh, that's where the pressure drop happen to uh, uh, in the drawdown. So we we as during acid stimulation, we work mainly on on this critical matrix area. It's around three feet to five to maximum five feet. In some acid stimulation jobs, it's inches around the neural bore, neural bore, and it, we can get significant gain in production uh, uh, just by uh, uh, treating this area. To evaluate our well to the, for the acid stimulation, we need to understand the the flow uh, during the production 
from the reservoir to the bottom of the hole and the due to and through our well, we need to do nodal analysis to uh, determine the, the fluid rate, the, fl the flow rate, uh, which uh, will uh, which will uh, will produce and and evaluate various components like tubing string, uh, flow line size, separator pressure, shock size. Uh, uh, downhole restriction, well completion techniques, all of that need to be implemented to to be uh, uh, removed from our restriction, because our as a stimulation or stimulation job mainly deal with the reservoir. So if we need to understand, not it's it's not like when you uh, the production drop. Let's let's send the asset truck and asset equipment and bump some bump some asset. Maybe the problem is uh, in the vertical lift performance uh, uh, or or uh, in in any uh, uh, part of the production system other than our reservoir. If the 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 problem of the production system is identified by nodal analysis and it's the near wheel bore area around it, around the uh, our wheel bore, so we, it's the optimum area that where is uh, acid is uh, acid stimulation is uh, is needed to be conducted for a stimulation. Generally, is what stimulation is a way to increase the productivity of the well uh, by Bombing above high fracture, uh, above the fracture pressure by creating fractures like hydraulic fracturing, or deal with the chemical reaction between the acid and the rock components in matrix acid stimulation, or using other stimulation technique like uh, plasma or uh, like uh, uh, waves. There is a lot of techniques that can increase the production based on the area. Or, the, of this stimulation area or the technique that's uh, conducted, uh, uh, that's the technique that's conducted to enhance the production and remove the neural board area or uh, remove the neural board damage or bypass this neural board damage. The main two stimulation method is hydraulic fracturing and acid stimulation. Hydraulic fracturing, uh, it's mainly in sandstone or in shale, acid stimulation. It's uh, in, uh, mainly in carbonate. We will know uh, why uh, in our uh, today session. But to decide what you, which stimulation uh, you can select by the nodal analysis, if you if you found the uh, positive skin, slight positive skin in your production, then you will need to consider matrix stimulation for sandstone or carbonate. And look and check the mechanical limitation, the uh, the the accessibility of to your reservoir or the uh, any mechanical limitation. Like for example, I can't conduct the acid stimulation in ESV bump. I can't go uh, without a Y tool. So you check the mechanic the mechanical limitation of your job and do your economic evaluation. But if it's uh, 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 you need a negative skin which with high with high value. So in in carbonate, you may consider acid frac or probe the frac in or sandstone. You go directly with probe the fracturing to uh, and with and decide after mechanical limit evaluating the mechanical limitations and economic evaluation and decide. Which type of frac or which type of as uh, which type of frac in in carbonate or select the the best uh, uh, design for hydraulic fracturing. So based on the skin and the depth of damage and based on the understanding of your formation damage source, you you need uh, and evaluate. Your, your skin and your source of skin, you need, you can select the stimulation uh, method that can be uh, conducted in your well. 
In acid stimulation, skin value that's resulted by acid stimulation in some, if you have, if you have some uh, wells with uh, two positive skins, uh, two value of uh, positive skin, you, you may drop it with acid stimulation to zero or maximum minus one. So if you need more than that, forget acid and go to directly to large uh, uh, stimulation jobs. Uh, but also for sandstone, it's a critical decision because you may end with increasing your uh, positive skin. So take your time in your formation evaluation and track your formation evaluation, your formation damage, uh, formation damage source and the amount of your formation damage and take your time because acid stimulation, especially in, in sandstone, it can give you a reward as a production gain or uh, uh, a production loss in your production. And we, it may, you may get at the end uh, uh, with, with uh, more positive skin. For, mass, for matrix acid, acid stimulation, it, the, the matrix acid stimulation is, or the matrix stimulation as a general is the chemical treatment that can be conducted with the pressure less than fracture pressure. So we don't create a fracture, we don't crack the well, and we let the acid re chemically react with, uh, with the rock components to remove the neurobore damage, like in sandstone, and we will know why in, 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 in during this, this session, or by both this formation damage. And we will also discuss this, this, this in our session. So as the stimulation be, is conducted below the fracture pressure and due to the chemical reaction between acid and the rock component to remove in sandstone, then the source of uh, formation damage or by bus in carbonate, the source of damage. For carbonate, for carbonate, acid stimulation is conducted to bypass the, the neural the, the damage. Why? Be, simply because the carbonate is chemically active and can, uh, uh, can uh, chemically uh, interact with the high, high solubility between the acid that we that we use which is H hcl mainly hcl or other acids uh, and the carbonate which is calcite or uh, dolomite so if i have a, a damage around the neural bore area or the, the in the area around the neural bore and in the critical matrix area i just bomb acid and this acid will react with calcite to bypass and create a conductive both a conductive bath, and the uh, this conduct good conductive bath is uh, called wormholes. This bypass the neural wall damage to get to uh, get the accessibility to our reservoir and the, remove the the skin. As a stimulation in, in carbonate create wormholes like the like what we see in uh, in the slide. It's based on the chemical reaction between rock components and the the, the acid. Simply, it's if let's imagine the acid is bombed against uh, the rock. The rock is mainly carbonate, but it has some some uh, heterogeneity or some other component like calcite or other component like clays or any uh, uh, or quartz or any other components that uh, that doesn't react with HCl. But there is another component which is chemically re reactive to the, the, the HCl. So it, it has, it, it reacts and to, to create the the spent acid and the uh, and dissolve in this acid then the acid go to the next uh, more more depth in the reservoir and react more and and so on so it 
it's it's if you, for example if i if we want to if if i have another this well for example and this and i bomb it acid so it fills the the an, a reactive uh, uh, component of carbonate so it can dissolve with this this carbonate then it, it it find another way to with more reaction and more reactive component so it it create warm holes based on the uh, the reaction between and the, of rock this rock component at the acid phase with and the reservoir the area of matrix stimulation in carbonate is maximum three feet the late studies uh, 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 especially by uh, the team uh, of dr da uh, daniel hell hills and texas and m found that it may be at 30 feet max as a maximum uh, around the new bore. so our uh, so it, but it's late studies uh, our effective stimulation in this uh, in this uh, in carbonate based on how the 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 the, the warm holes created uh, what is the depth of penetration of this warm hole so our main control of carbonate because of the, of the high reaction between the high reaction rate between carbonate and acid especially in high temperature is to control the, this reaction rate uh, like uh, uh, to get the maximum warm holes to uh, and get maximum penetration for warm holes it's because once you get a good warm hole between our your well and your reservoir your damage is by bust and you you will get gain in production carbonate rock is uh, is mainly two types limestone and dolomite limestone is uh, uh, when it's called the rock is called limestone when the 50, more than 50 percent of the rock is is calcite and it's called dolomite if it's more than 50 percent uh, 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 dolomite especially we care about the dolomite because dolomite is mainly as you know the carb for carbonate the main source of uh, your porosity and your reservoir is secondary porosity which uh, created by natural fractures or especially for dolomite is dolomitization dolomitization is uh, the process of alteration from the, the calcite to dolomite uh, due to the volume of uh, grain uh, the dolomite grain is lower so it, it better uh, it provides better reservoir quality but it's not uh, but in several cases it may be it, it produce more due to over dolomitization it it creates uh, less permeable rock, or, or uh, so you you need to care about and your and uh, characterize your reservoir well. But generally, as a dolomitization as a process, create better uh, reservoir quality rock, and it generally is a more uh, more permeable than limestone, and but it difficult difficult to distinguish between uh, limestone and dolomite but dolomite is a the other type of of uh, carbonate that we deal with that we deal with with in uh, matrix stimulation in carbonate For, as as you know the carbonate rock mainly uh, as a, is as a war due to dolomitization that, that created the porosity or the um, due to natural fractures or the uh, and it and because it mainly uh, consists of natural fractures so it's it high effective vulnerability in acid stimulation to create this uh, wonderful warm holes we use mainly hcl hydrochloric acid but in in deep reservoirs like uh, 
uh, with temperature 300 Fahrenheit or 20, 250 Fahrenheit, the hydrochloric acid the reaction rate is very very strong. So we need to control this reaction rate uh, to to create efficient uh, wormholes to uh, bypass the damage because mainly the, the production gain comes from deeper wormholes. So we need to control the reaction rate by reducing use weaker acid like formic acid or acetic acid, organic acids. These organic acids used to control the reaction rate because high reaction rate will increase the byproducts of the corrosion because at the end we deal with iron in, or, or, uh, in the in well tubulars and uh, our casing, our, there is a lot of byproducts in the uh, in the secondary actions like with uh, with uh, with the well tubulars or the completion or or uh, any other component. So we need to control this reaction rate by using alternative in high temperature. So the main challenge of carbonate acidizing is to control our reaction rate. You, you, if you if you are on the acid, uh, the acid stimulation job in carbonate, you just bump the acid, and you before the bumping the acid, you will uh, you will uh, uh, you will find the pressure well head pressure is one thousand psi, one thousand five hundred psi. Then once the acid touches the formation, this this pressure will drop. And in some cases, I, I personally, I bombed several jobs with, uh, with six barrel per minute with zero well head, and it's a vacuum oil because the, the reaction between the acid, HCl, and the carbonate is very strong, and we need to control it to get efficient warm oil. This is a reaction between limestone and dolomite with uh, with HCl and what is the, the products of, of this reaction is CaCl2 uh, uh, and in dolomite MgC, uh, MgCl2. And this is uh, simply the, the quantities of the reaction between uh, the reaction products between the acid, acid which is it mainly HCl or uh, acetic acid as if you if if you use it in high temperature and our carbonate we need to know if you if we, uh, if we need we need if we just deeply discussed this uh, uh, acid stimulation uh, chemistry we we need uh, uh, to to know the amount of dissolving mass to optimize the volume and uh, model the Penetration rate for uh, for for the worm holding and uh, understand the interaction between the acid stimulation and the natural fractures that are present in 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 uh, natural in uh, natural fractured carbonate. So a lot of details needed uh, to be understood uh, in uh, in the uh, stoichiometry between uh, uh, the limestone and reaction and uh, with uh, HCl, but we need, uh, if, if we, but it, take, it may take uh, a lot of time. And, and just today we'll talk briefly about uh, how, uh, about this uh, reaction, but we need to understand well the, the amount of dissolved mass uh, of carbonate uh, uh, by HCl to uh, model or to understand the how the wormhole created in our reservoir. In carbonate acidizing, we we care about different aspects like the penetration because it's our uh, the our our uh, key layer to get get production gain is the penetration, but this penetration may be uh maybe uh, uh dismissed by the acid reactivity or uh and its relation with the injection rate and the diversion because mainly in in the the main 
technology in acid stimulation, concentrate on the diversion because simply if you have, for example, 1000 feet of carbonate and you bomb it your acid, it will dissolve the first 100, uh, 100, uh, it will dissolve 100 uh, feet of this, uh, or it will dissolve around the first 10 or uh, 20 feet of of this uh, carbonate and and create wormholes but and but you will need to uh, cover the other areas so the main one of the main issue in carbonate acidizing is the diversion to divert the acid because you want more uh, uh, reaction and you you need to cover the rest of your reservoir with your uh, uh, your acid to get efficient wormholing because it's it's not a gain in production if you created one wormhole and you keep bombing acid in it and it will take and the severity will be higher so it will take more the subsequent acid and subsequent acid and leave the the rest of your perforation without acidizing without it wormholing so you will not you lost the the opportunity to deal with this uh, damage. So the main challenges in uh, carbonate acidizing and the so where the technology is developed is we need the penetration. We need to control the the relationship between the acid reaction rate and the injection rate. We we just need to bomb acid and then it will react and and so on to good efficient penetration and to, we need to divert our uh, our cost which is mainly the acid volume to be diverted or, or to be distributed efficiently uh, based on its damage so it, it, it the main challenge is diversion so that's the main uh, carbonate acidizing challenges As we discussed, the rate of acid reaction with carbonate is, based, is mainly on, depends on the rate of acid reaction with the rock and the rate of acid transfer to the surface, uh, to the surface of the rock and rate of fluid loss to the formation bore space. For example, if, if I have a, a well and I have a perforation and I bomb it, acid and this acid is uh, due to high temperature the reaction rate is very high so it it will react uh, in the in this area the, due to the high reaction it will dissolve a lot of rock but it will I, I, it will uh, not give deeper penetration so in this case it it give uh, uh, inefficient stimulation due to, due to the reaction rate is, high, is very higher than the injection rate or the rate of transfer between the, the, the surface of the well to the well bore. If it, it, if it uh, uh, the reaction, if the reaction, the, if the reaction rate is very low, so I used weak, very weak acid and the bomb with it was higher, bombing rate or injection rate, it will, it will be bombed and go to the matrix permeability, but it, there is no opportunity to get efficient reaction between rock and the, between rock and the, the acid and no efficient hormoning or it just dissipate in the initial permeability of our reservoir without dissolving the, the or without bypass the neuromore damage. So the main control of acid stimulation in carbonate is to control the injection rate with the reaction rate. And the, and, and the more discussion or more, uh, uh, more uh, details uh, can be discussed later, but this, that's briefly the acid reaction in carbonate. So in carbonate, we, we bypass the neural board damage. We get the benefit of CaCO3 reacts with HCl, 
to to uh, uh, and it's very reactive. So and solubility of carbonate is very uh, is very strong. And uh, uh, and if I have any damage, just bypass it by HCl and the cigarette. Every uh, if you work in in golf or uh, or or with carbonate reservoir, just bomb the acid. It will bypass the neurobore damage, and the life is easy. But you you just you just need to control the reaction rate with uh, the reaction rate with uh, with the bombing rate to get the efficient hormoning and optimize the cost of acid stimulation. Okay, but in sandstone, but uh, also if you uh, didn't identify the source of damage, it doesn't it doesn't matter like sandstone. It but if, if you anyway you uh, you uh, you bypass this source of damage by bumping this reactive fluid which is acid which dissolves the carbonate this is the story of the carbonate acidizing for sandstone acidizing the story is very different the main difference is the main component of acid, of sandstone is the quartz the quartz doesn't dissolve with acids. Even HF, even HF, even other uh, acids, uh, strong acids, even with the strong acids. Quartz, the main component of acid of sandstone, doesn't dissolve with acid. But so, what the main uh, rule of matrix stimulation in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, sandstone? In sandstone. You deal with the source of damage. You go to with the details of the source of damage. Is the damage due to uh, a fine migration and due to presence of clays or the clay swelling, or what is the specifically the source of damage? And you deal with this source of damage using the acid. You so in sandstone. We deal with the specific details of uh, uh, of uh, specific details of the this uh, source of damage, like the clays or cement material, and deal with it with acid and dissolve it, and to re to remove the neuro neuro damage. This reaction with we we don't use HCl because simply if you check the the solubility. Of the clays and the different rock components with with HCl, the the clays uh, the clays reaction between HCl and and H, between HCl and the clays between non to moderate, uh, in in but in most of rock component uh, with HCl is uh, is uh, not soluble in acid, so we we'll go to another strong acid which is the mixture between HCl and HF to dissolve this clays so we don't bypass the damage in sandstone we deal with it in in sandstone so the penetration area or the area of the matrix stimulation in sandstone is inches around the bore because we don't bypass the damage like we did with carbonate, so it's a critical. It has a lot of byproducts. It, it the, the reaction is not one step reaction, but it like we when we like we see in in the in the subsequent uh, slides, we 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 have primary reaction, secondary action, tertiary reaction. If I missed, uh, for example, uh, the, if there is carbonate in this uh, uh, in this reservoir. And I bump it HF, one of the products will be CAF2. It's a sticky percepted and it will block your uh, 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 neural bore area and it will get more damage. So, the main, if you, for example, if you didn't displace uh, uh, the uh, 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 the uh, Na and K, the alkali uh, uh, minerals in in your reservoir, uh, and and your your HF reacted with uh, uh, 
with this alkali minerals, you will get more damage uh, and uh, precipitates of uh, alkali flu aluminate and alkali flu silicates. So you need to care about the reaction between HF once you use it and the, the byproducts of your reservoir. So in sandstone, it's a different methodology and uh, during the magnetic stimulation in, in sandstone, the target of sandstone is to, do, to remove the mineral wall damage and to deal with the, the components of the rock. The main component is quartz. It's, it, it, it doesn't dissolve with any acid, but you deal with the clays, the amount of carbonate. For example, if you have uh, more than 20% of carbonate in your acid, it's enough to bomb HCl to bypass the damage. Deal, it, deal with it as a carbonate reservoir. But it's if it's less, to, and it will be more complicated. So you need to spend your time to study the mineralogy of your rock, check the core, check the, the open hole log, do your exercise of the petrophysical analysis, uh, uh, check every single information about your reservoir, because if you miss the, the, any rock component, it will it uh, due to the reaction between HF and this uh, ignored rock component. For acid stimulation in sandstone, we use a mixture of HCl and HF. This because the mineral dissolves in HF in the presence of HCl. So if you have Na or K, in your reservoir, in the brine, in the in the brine of your reservoir, it will precipitate alkali flu aluminate and alkali flu silicates. If you have Ca, the mineral uh, uh, Ca calcium in your brine, it will precipitate CaF2, and this is especially CaF2 precipitate is a sticky precipitate which is hard to be removed. So you need to care about the component of rock and uh, and especially for the carbonate if you decided to 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 uh, use the hf but this reaction is uh, as a uh, is not the the final reaction with time and uh, it, it uh, with time it, it it the products of l, l uh, uh, ALF, the mineral, the, the byproducts of this reaction, try to uh, stabilize and get secondary reaction to get, uh, uh, to get more perceptive silica gel. So if you bomb it just H HCl and HF in your reservoir and you leave it, it will uh, uh, percept it another reaction, another percept uh, 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 in secondary action. And in, in third and in tertiary reaction, especially for high temperature, and uh, uh, and also uh, if you didn't take the right procedures for acid stimulation in sandstone, acid stimulation in sandstone is not just bombing the acid and leave the the the, the acid in the reservoir. It needs pretreatment stage. Brief flush, main acid stimulation uh, uh, stage, and buster flush. That's why we need to care about the sandstone, and we div divide this, this, the the job into three stages. We need to, for example, displace the oil and displace the brine with with NH4Cl to remove the or to remove the Na and K the sodium and the potassium in our brine and then we we uh, uh, we deal with the pre-flush to this this dissolve the carbonate then deal with the clays with the mixture between hs H, uh, hf and hcl then post the flush to remove the neural board damage uh, remove the this precipitate and prevent the secondary action and tertiary action any mess step in this sandstone 
uh, acidizing, it will create precipitate, which is more damage. More high, more high temperature. Uh, also, uh, more high temperature means more reaction rate for HF. The reaction, for example, HF, it doesn't, uh, we, we don't bring the, the acid, uh, the HF on location uh, uh, directly. We mix it to uh, ammonium bifluoride, which is HCl, to create the mixture HCl with HF. Due to the high reaction, it will cause a lot of corrosion by products. So a lot of problems due to the, the very high reaction rate between the HF and different uh, components. And this is the byproducts of HF in, in, uh, in, in, uh, for that we, we may find we may find in, in the due to the use of HF with with the rock. For example, this is uh, the CA. Uh, this is ammonium uh, ammonium uh, flucilicates. It's it's a sol very soluble, but if you check the uh, uh, the the products of uh, you you may find you may fi uh, create different uh, very insoluble perceptic just by using HF without understanding or without displacing or without uh, care about uh, dealing with this uh, by products. The main byproducts that we face in, in, in when we use HF in our sandstone, the main uh, problem is CAF2. If you didn't deal with it, you will precipitate and it's sticky precipitate and it will be very hard to, uh, to remove. So N, A, and K, which is in the brine, so it, it will uh, cause more precipitate, so it will create more damage. And there is other byproducts like fluoruminates, colloidal uh, amorphous silica, uh, aluminum uh, hydroxides, and also this uh, ferric hydroxide and, and carbonates cause a lot of, due to the HF reaction with uh, the casing and the tubing, create a lot of products, uh, which is create a lot of damage. So we need to care about the HF when we use it. Just to imagine the, the main issue of HF, the advanced, if you take talk a look to uh, the advanced technology of uh, acid stimulation, you we will find that the, the advanced solution is to create the, hydroic, uh, the HF, hydrofluoric acid, in the reservoir. Not it's it's not bumping the the acids the HF in the in the directly from the surface. It it created uh, specifically in against the reservoir and to de to uh, decrease its side effect. So you need to care about the reaction of HF uh, carefully. This is the, the sandstone acidizing state fluid stages. First of all, we bump a pre-stage. We need we don't need uh, the components that may be present in, in, the, in our prime. Then after that, we, we bump pre-flush, then main acid stimulation and post flush. Main acid stimulation is the component, is the mixture of HCl and HF to create to dissolve the clays. This by to prevent second reaction and third tertiary reaction, we bump HCl to displace and increase uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, increase increase the concentration of HCl and to prevent the tertiary reaction and secondary reaction, because when you the the pH increase and you get spent acid. It's opportun especially for high temperature, it's, it's opportunity to precipitate the secondary, uh, bro sec secondary reaction byproduct or tertiary reaction 
uh, by products. So it's a complicated process, not like the carbonate. Carbonate bump, bump this amount of HCl and that's it. And it will bypass the damage easily. So in, in, in acid stimulation in sandstone, you displace the crude oil with, with solvent or, uh, or any other uh, material that can displace your uh, crude oil. Then uh, you go with displacement of uh, 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 NH4Cl mixture, which is to, to remove the effect. We, our main uh, uh, bad minerals is Na and K and calcium. So th this is, we need to displace all this because we will use the strong acid, which is HF. And if HF reacted with these minerals, it will create perceptids. This is one of the uh, uh, flow charts of using uh, 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 HF in sandstone. You, it, you may find it in several books, but the main, uh, you may notice that a lot of, in a lot of stages, don't use it, HF, don't use HF, don't use HF. If, if will bore area damaged, yes, okay. So if it's no, don't use HF because the, the main, it's, it has safety issue, corrosion issue, it's reaction rate it, and the byproducts with, uh, with rock minerals is, is uh, it may cause a lot of damage. So you need to check and check your reservoir carefully before using mud acid. In carbonate, if you bomb with HCl and you didn't create uh, efficient hormoning, you can bomb HCl again. And, and uh, for third time, you can bomb it. But in HF, if you missed, for example, you missed the, the, that um, a small information like there is carbonate cement material in your sandstone, you will bomb HF and you will plug your reservoir and your uh, neurobore area with this CAF2. And so it, before you use HF, Take care of, about uh, your uh, reservoir rock component. The acid stimulation in in uh, in uh, sandstone, the standard acid stimulation is the mixture. Uh, estimation fluid is the mixture between HF and HCl. It doesn't uh, if it if you bring HF to the location, you need nickel. Uh, con uh, containers to 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 move this HF, but in practical way we use ammonium bifluoride with HF, which was HCl, to create the mixture between HCl and uh, HCl and HF. The standard the standard concentration be uh, the standard concentration uh, ratio between HCl and HF is. 12% 12, 12, uh, HCl with 3% HF, but there is some uh, modifications on this regular mud acid. Regular mud acid, 12% 12, 12, uh, HCl, 3% HF. But half burst due to high temperature and you need to minimize the effects, the bad effect of the aggressive HF, you may use six uh, in high temperature, you may use six six uh, uh, percent uh, uh, HCl with one and a half percent of uh, 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 of HF, and there is a lot of mixture between that for the concentration of HCl and HF based on your reservoir, your reservoir, your reservoir uh, component, and your reservoir uh, temperature. And the reaction rate and the reaction rate with uh, with the metal in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, your reservoir. So you need to check a lot of 
factors before decide your uh, mixture, your uh, mud acid mixture. But another, due but if you have a very high temperature and you you have a casing that is uh, very old and you you for sure you will get a lot of byproducts due to corrosion products or or minerals of the rock. You you may use. Uh, weaker acids like organic mud acid or fluoric acid, organic clay acid, all these acids mainly depend on creating HF downhole against your reservoir to minimize its, uh, uh, its aggressive reaction. Also, this aggressive reaction, we, we need to take care about this uh, aggressive reaction to get uh, 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 efficient penetration. For example, if it's if this uh, due to reaction rate of HF, I spent my acid one inch around the neural bore, so I missed three or four inches in the neural bore area, which you need treatment. So you need also to take care about the reaction rate of HF and control it to get more uh, penetration and get the area around neural bore, uh, your neural bore uh, treated well. So in the main acid, due to the, 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 the mud acid HCl with HF can be spent very rapidly and it and not efficient to remove the clays or the fine in the deep uh, in, in the reservoir. So, uh, 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 but you, uh, but you, that's why we need to control the reaction, the percentage of mud acid to, uh, uh, to be optimized to remove the neural wool damage in the neural wool area. We don't need to mess the to miss any near wool area untreated so we, so we need to control the uh, reaction rate between uh, of the hf we know we need to note that hf is very aggressive especially for the corrosion point of view with the byproducts of uh, of hf like with na with uh, with uh, k with uh, with uh, calcium so it it, it's very, you need to take care about all these components. As a summary, sandstone is, uh, uh, sandstone, we deal with the source of damage by the solution of the clays. But in carbonate, we bypass this damage using uh, uh, the HCL. In sandstone, we deal specifically with the clays or the this source of damage to dissolve it with uh, HCl and HF, but with carbonate we bypass we can we we bypass all this sources of all of damage or complication by bypass them by creating conductive both which which is wormholes. The main issue that when we decide on the acid simulation job. In sandstone, is the precipitation. We, we need to prevent the precipitation of the reaction, HF reaction. For carbonate, the main issue is to control the reaction rate with the injection rate to and divert the acid, the acid to our reservoir. Because if you bump it uh, and let it go, it will go to the best to 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 it will go to the first part of your reservoir and 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 subsequent any subsequent acid will go to the same place and and you lose your acid without efficient worm holding. The main issue for the carbonate is you need to cover your reservoir and to get efficient penetration for worm holding. For sandstone you need to dissolve the the, the source of damage and care about the precipitation of byproducts, so it need more study of your reservoir components. In carbonate, you may get, you deal with 
uh, deeper area of uh, treatment, three, three feet maximum. But in sandstone, you deal with inches around the new bore. It's And so in sandstone, if you have damage one or two, it will drop to zero or maximum minus one. Maximum minus two okay, as a skin value, you can get it in, in, in carbonate because it's more penetration and it's it's more active with 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 HCL. It's, it, and it's relatively simpler than the uh, the sandstone. So you need to care about the temperature, the rock component, the formation uh, damage source. And the, the status of your will will be tubular, and uh, uh, all these factors need to be considered in your acid simulation job, and to understand well your reaction between your acid and the the rock components, and specifically work on uh, dealing with each problem like the precipitation, in sandstone, and in carbonate the coverage. Because if you bump any acid in carbonate, it will dissolve, but it will not give you the reward of production gain if you didn't care about the diversion and the coverage of your acid through all your uh, all uh, reservoir uh, uh, area. And uh, that's briefly the acid stimulation. Uh, uh, difference between the rock, between the carbonate and acidizing, and why in sandstone we deal with the pre treatment stage, pre flush, main, main, main treatment, and post the flush. And we in carbonate, we deal only with bombing acid, just one step with higher rate to the, uh, to the our reservoir. And uh, thank you, and I'm happy to uh, answer any of your question. Thank you, Engineer Muhammad. Uh, everyone, feel free to send your questions in the chat area, and I will read it uh, loudly to Engineer Muhammad so that you can get your answer. Okay. Yeah, is there any question? I can send you the, the, the slides. I will send it to uh, Jerry Sum and he, will, he can distribute it. Uh, 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 sure, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Guys, questions, please. I saw some uh, some people, a couple of people uh, raised their hands. You can, uh, if you want, uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and, uh, and ask the question. Yeah. Okay, but I, I can't see them now uh, raising their hands. If I see someone, I will uh, unmute him to ask this question by himself. We have uh, we have a question from uh, Aloy. Uh, she's asking about, uh, he's asking about, sorry, he's asking about, can you tell, uh, him, which one is good to reservoir? Uh, acid stimulation, as, as we discussed in our uh, session today, acid stimulation is considered a cheap stimulation job. It costs around 
dollar per job or fifty thousand dollar per job. Uh, uh, it's a, a cheap solution that can be uh, done quickly with with less complications like the hydraulic fracturing. But if, you, for example, if you missed the if you missed the uh, any rock component, especially in sandstone, you, it will you will get the penalty of production loss due to bad stimulation decision. So which one? Is good for to reservoir based on your reservoir, based on the your reservoir condition. If it if you know well your reservoir your reservoir damage is from this type of place and you study well and you selected your reservoir your uh, stimulation fluid to treat this source of damage and you are pretty sure that you can deal with this source of damage, as the stimulation is very good for. Uh, 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 for your reservoir, but if you have doubts, some people prefer to go with the higher cost, like hydraulic fracturing, as a main, and that's why the main hydraulic fracturing is the main treatment method to, uh, 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 to the, the main treatment method for sandstone, because you don't actually in practical life we don't know. The main, the each uh, component, uh, the main, the the component of each rock component in the sandstone. We agree now, can quartz doesn't dissolve with any acid, so you deal with clays. So it will differ severely if you, if your clay type is kaolinite or elite or uh, or uh, smectite or any other. So you need to uh, care about. The, the reaction between the acid and your reservoir, if you are not sure and there is uncertainty due to unavailability of the unavailability of the data, so go to the other method, which is hydraulic fraction. But with, with carbonate, we will select carbonate and carbonate bump some acid to bypass this damage and the, the life is easy. But in, in, in carbonate, if your acid didn't connect with the natural fracture system in your carbonate, it, the, the gain of, of acid stimulation is, will be not uh, good enough. So you may go to the hydraulic fracturing in carbonate also due to this reason. But it's less complicated and less penalty if you fail to treat uh, carbonate with acid. I hope I answered your question. Okay, awesome. Uh, another question from Muhammad. He is asking, uh, which type of rock that does not uh, he he means that is not reacting with the acid. Um, yeah, there is no ever in, in in acid. Yeah, uh, for 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 uh, carbonate, it dissolves with HCl, and uh, the reaction is very high, and uh, especially for high temperature. For sandstone, the the solubility of acid and different acids uh, for uh, the, the quartz, it doesn't dissolve uh, in HCl and doesn't dissolve also in HCl uh, and, uh, and HF. The clays dissolve with the mixture between HCl and HF. So the main component of uh, sandstone doesn't dissolve with any acid and we deal with uh, the cement material and the other component, the secondary component in the sandstone when we treat it with acid uh, stimulation. Okay. I have another question. Uh, what are the effects between uh, secondary action and tertiary action? Uh, why we uh, I think it's her question, but she, she's asking about the, the, the effects of secondary and tertiary action of the acid uh, and its effect on producing more hydrocarbon. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm getting her question. Uh, question. There is a the secondary action and tertiary action is uh, due to the reaction between HCl and the HF with the 
with uh, rock components and leave it without displacement, without, uh, without displacement uh, or without treatment for a longer time. For example, if I, if I bombed HCL and HF and it reacted with the mineral of the rock, which is the clays, it will create the, the, it will, the primary action will happen and I will get the solution of, and, and the, the clays will be dissolved. But if I didn't do the post flush and I and, and I left the uh, uh, the the presence of HCl and HF in place, it will get secondary action, which is uh, the uh, uh, derived by the the affinity of fluorine of uh, aluminum and to create silica gel. And you with if you with with more time and with higher temperature it will create more silica gel precipitate. So you dissolve the clays, but you replace it with the silica gel because you didn't treat the, the sandstone with the multiple stages like uh, in uh, uh, like it's needed. Uh, you need to bump the HCl and HF as the, the mud acid and or the acid that dissolves the clays and displace quickly uh, uh, and don't let the pH in the presence of HF to be go higher. If it's went higher and with higher temperature, it will it will react and will get secondary reaction by products and tertiary reactions by Products, so you need. That's why in post flush we bump HCl also, and uh, and to dissolve. If you have any precipitate, you dissolve it. If if and prevent precipitation of other uh, precipitates. And that that's so that we have a lot of byproducts that can be created, and its solubility very 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 low. So you need to care about uh, this. Uh, thank you. Any other questions, guys? Okay, okay. I have a, I have a question until uh, uh, anyone is sending another question. Uh, for for acid jobs that is uh, specified, like acid backwash jobs that is specified for uh, artificial lips, uh, like ESP. Uh, yeah. Is it a different design for for yeah. this job? And uh, yeah. what, what are the, the 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 factors that we need to take care about when designing this? Uh, I, I I know that there is a metal contact, and uh, some sometimes we have to know the type of acid that it will be in contact with the bomb, uh, so that we can not uh, failure the system. So yeah. can you uh, give us more insights about this? Okay, uh, for for the acid backwash. Or uh, acid backwash is a treatment that we conduct uh, to treat the the scale products or the precipitation in the pump, especially for ESV pump, uh, uh, due to the the scale. So it it's it's away from our reservoir. You identify, you take a sample and uh, identify the scale, uh, uh, the scale type uh, and the precipitation types of. Uh, types of precipitation that's precipitated in your uh, artificial lift and you deal with it you uh, by dissolve by by to dissolve it using hcl or using other surfac uh, other surfactants or other chemical so it's away from our reservoir as system so it's not a type of acid stimulation it's a, it's a type of well intervention job or well surfaces job that deal to clean your bump, so it's away from your uh, 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 reservoir. Also, for in some, you may also uh, uh, know there is some companies use HCL with a very small volume with low bumping rate uh, as a perfosh. This is also not a, a matrix stimulation job; just a wash for the perforation. So. So you may use HCL if your scale dissolve in, in that's precipitated in the pump 
dissolve in HCl, or for example, you can use. Uh, I, I previously I worked on a well which dissolved the the scale with HCl with HF, which is also uh, we need to if you we used the strong acids with the pumps, you need to take care to uh, circulate and uh, prevent the contact between our acid and our reservoir because acid is, if it, in some cases, if you didn't identify well the source of damage and the raw component, it will give you a penalty to, uh, of production loss. So uh, uh, it's different uh, in, in acid backwash, you you take the sample and do do scale analysis and identify the solubility of this scale and select the acid based on this uh, based on this uh, scale and dissolve it with acid and try to prevent the contact between this acid and your reservoir. Oh, very clear. Thank you. Seems like uh, we don't have uh, more questions. So uh, thank you all for joining us today to learn more about sandstone and the carbonate stimulation. Uh, I would like to extend a special thank you to our guest speaker, engineer Mohammed uh, Gabri, for sharing his expertise with us. Uh, your insights have been invaluable and we appreciate your time and effort in helping us better understand this topic. Uh, as, we, as we close out this webinar, I want to leave you all with something to think about. Uh, the future of sandstone and carbonate stimulation is full of exciting uh, uh, possibilities as the technology continues to advance and new discoveries are made. We can expect to see innovative technologies and approaches that will uh, revolutionize the, the way we approach this field. Uh, I encourage you all to stay engaged with this topic and to continue learning and exploring its many uh, areas of, uh, of interest. Once again, thank you all for being part of this webinar. We hope you found it informative and engaging. We look forward to continuing the conversation with you in the future. Uh, just one last note before uh, ending the webinar, please take a moment to fill in the feedback form that I sent in the chat area so that we can get your, uh, your feedback and know your needs for the next uh, webinars. Thanks again, Engineer Mohammed, and all have a nice day. Thank you, sir. See you.